Hi everyone, welcome to my devlog series where you can follow me making my new open world voxel sandbox game. Last time, we added new blocks to the game using JSON and modified our terrain generator to make nice mountains. This week's devlog will be a bit special. I didn't have the time to implement the physics engine because I came across several problems. and school was taking me too much time to fully focus on the project. So this week will be half chill, half hardcore. First, I'll design new logos for the channel, and then I will upgrade the whole project to LWJGL3. But why would I do that? Well, because LWJGL2 is old and not as optimized as LWJGL3 and some useful libraries to do frustum cutting are missing. Just before we get started, I noticed that only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribers, so if you want to follow and support the development of the game, consider subscribing. It helps me a lot. Let's get started. So, right after I uploaded the last devlog, I started implementing frustum cutting. Basically, frustum cutting is a technique which consists in cutting the elements not in the view frustum. So, for example, if a junk is not visible by the player, it won't be added to the render pool. But if only a small bit of it is visible, then it should be rendered. The rendering will at least double in performance since at least everything behind the player won't be rendered. The view frustum is pretty simple to visualize. It is basically six planes, right and left, top and bottom, far and near. So we only need to define a bounding box for each chunk and then for each plane check if the box intersects or if it is in front of the plane. So two parts here, getting the six planes and checking. Checking is easy. It is a simple AABB, aligned axis bounding box intersection versus plane algorithm. But the first part is super abstract because the actual frustum is defined by two matrices, the projection matrix and the view matrix. There are multiple ways to extract the planes from these, but when things are not working, it is hard to debug. I tried my best, but I couldn't get it to work. Aww. But I found a workaround. Yeah. LWJGL3 A library called GOLML for Java OpenGL Math Library has a frustum curling intersection class that do all of the frustum curling stuff that we need in a very efficient way. But before upgrading to LWJGL3, I wanted to change my mind a little bit with something that is not programming. So I made a kind of graphical identity for the channel. I made a new logo, a new banner, and I carefully chose the colors and the font to reuse them later, for example on a website. The icon is a cube in curly brackets. The font is Fira Code, a common programming font. And the orange is inspired by syntax highlight that we find on most programming softwares. Okay, back to programming. Now it is time to upgrade to LWJGL3. I have to modify this to this. Second, change all of the old matrices and vectors to the new GOML ones. 
third, I have to change all of the display management code to use GFW. Fourth, I have to update the input code, also to use GLFW. Here is how it works now. Each key can have four states, sleep, down, hold and up. Sleep is not pressed, down is a one frame state that automatically switches to hold if the key is pressed for more than one frame. And up is also a one frame state that switches to sleep right after the key was released. The states are always in this order. First it is down, then hold, then up, then sleep. Then I have a map of used keys with their states. Then I have a method called each frame that do the automatic change to hold and sleep. The same applies to mouse input and this way I can easily modify what keys have to be listened. And from any script, I can check what is the current user input. For example, in the player movement script, I can use the input dot is key hold and this method will keep returning true until the player release the key. But for an inventory key for example, I only want the function to return true once. So in this case, I can use input dot is key down and it will return true once until the player release the key and press it again. I spent a few minutes correcting some bugs that prevent the game to load and at this point I had nothing. It has been three weeks since I updated the project and I couldn't find where the problem is. I've been talking with a subscriber, Sky, and he proposed his help. He is working on his own Java engine with LWJGL3 and after he looked at my code, he sent me a basic but working version of his engine for me to work with. Okay. The plan is to rewrite the engine. When everything will be working, I'll implement what Sky did, especially on his window class, which is perfect. So again, let's get coding. Okay. With this project, I should be able to render 3D models loaded from OBJ files, use light and move around. The problem is that of course it is not working. So I took this project, copied it and reduced it into a minimal project. With this one, I should be able to render a cube and move around. And again it is not working. So. In these 10 little scripts, there is some errors that prevents rendering from happening. I posted the code on Stack Overflow and someone linked an article about common pitfalls using the math library GOML. It turned out that first I was missing one OpenGL call that wasn't necessary in LWJGL2. And second, thanks to another Stack Overflow question, I found that I missed a line in the first text shader. And now... You can't imagine how happy I am to see a good old quad on the screen. From here, I gradually updated the different level of the project and things started to render, almost perfectly. Finally, after a plethora of tests and debugging, everything was back. The only thing left I had to do was to implement first time killing. That was the main goal of this episode when I started working on it, one month and a half before. Within a few minutes, I implemented the GOML way of doing things and surprisingly, I had almost the same bug as before. 
I assume that LWJGL code is correct. So the problem is either my projection and view matrices or the blocks encapsulating my chunk. Obviously, the projection and view matrices are correct since everything is rendered properly. So it has to be the... Wait a second. That is not supposed to be a Y here, but a Z. Okay, here is an exaggerated visualization of the frustum culling. Everything not in the frustum is not being rendered. And here is a comparison on how long rendering takes on average, with and without frustum culling. Look at this, we almost doubled the performance of rendering. We did it, guys! So, that's it for this episode. To sum up, we wanted to implement first time killing, but it wasn't working, so we updated the project to LWJGL3, rewrote it, and finally got first time killing working. In the next episode, we will finally implement the physics engine and start working on debugging solutions because when you try to emulate collisions between objects with mathematical formulas, things can only get buggy. Again, sorry for the delay of this episode. Now I am more motivated than ever to add new features to the engine. I saw that we are more than 200 people on the channel, so thanks a lot. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, it helps me a lot. Thanks for watching.